Hey, uh, Terrell, uh, you know, with some time to process what happened yesterday, I guess, you know, what do you uh, what do you kind of focus on the most? Uh, I focus on mainly like what we can do, like one in our room, then as a defense and then so on and so forth. What we can do collectively is like just to help pick up the energy, help us you know, come together and really like, you know what I'm saying, all play to the best of our abilities, every play, snap in, snap out, and just try to be the best version of ourselves consistently to the point where it's like, you know what I'm saying, we can't, we can, you know what I'm saying, only control what we can control and, you know what I'm saying, make the best out of the opportunity we get when the opportunity presents itself. And so that we can, you know what I'm saying, at least when we look back at the film, say, okay, we, you know what I'm saying, we tried to be a bright spot for the, you know what I'm saying, for the team and try to be a spark try to, you know what I'm saying, provide some good positive energy for us, you know what I'm saying, build off of as a team and, you know what I'm saying, give us some momentum. You know, with uh, Bobby Wagner, you know, he joined the Rams to win a Super Bowl. Uh, it would be a second one, but it's not working out that way for him. But for him to be around and be a leader during these kind of trying times, how how big is that for, for guys like you and the entire team? Um, It's super. Wait, say that one more time. Yeah, you know, with Bobby, obviously he didn't want to come here to 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 miss the playoffs, but he wanted to win a Super Bowl. But just to have his leadership around during you know difficult times is that something that you guys lean on to him for? Oh yeah, I've been like I said, I've been leaning on the Bobby since I just met him, just being able to pick his brain and stuff like that. He didn't gave me books to read, all types of stuff, just outside of football as a man. Just you know what I'm saying, just giving me books to read. Like I even after the game, like I told him like. You just gotta, you know what I'm saying, a book he put me on to chop wood, carry water. Like that's somewhere you, you know what I'm saying, you gotta just enjoy the process of it, enjoy the, you know what I'm saying, the seasonal ways of like, you know what I'm saying, you're you gonna go through ups and downs, but you gotta continue to keep sharpening your tools throughout the process, keep building off what you can learn and continue to just chop wood, carry water, and continue to do the little things. You, throughout the process to where, you know what I'm saying, you're trying to become great. So, it, he, you know what I'm saying, him leadership-wise, like even today, I told him in the, in the weight room, like, I'm like, man, I appreciate you always just like, always being in here. You don't ever look for no shortcuts. You always, you know what I'm saying, you always present. You always just doing all the little things, you know what I'm saying, other guys, you know what I'm saying, when things get rocky, people start to like try to deflect and, you know what I'm saying, almost, I'm not going to say cop out, but like, try to take little shortcuts where like maybe I don't feel like doing this today and you know what I'm saying she's not working out how I would expect to so I'm kind of just going to start easing easing taking my foot off the gas a little bit but like Bobby one of them guys you see him go about he 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 shows me the true like not just a pro as a football player but like as a leader like he he goes through everything with the guys day in day out always involved, you know what I'm saying, personal do on and off the field. Like, you appreciate just being able to cross paths with people like that. Thank you, Terrell. Appreciate that. Greg? Hey, Terrell. Thanks for doing this, man. Uh, what's, it, what's, it, what's it been like for you being healthy all year, not missing a game, being able to grow and continue to build your game and, and not have to worry about being in the training room as much as you have the last couple of years? Well, I'm always being in the training room. I mean, I mean, I was I was healthy last year. I'm a, I'm in the training room to be proactive all the time. So I mean, like this year, I would say it's it's been more of a just be, being able to consistently be out there and knowing that I'm gonna always be out there with them guys regardless of the circumstances. Like it's definitely comforting. It's definitely better for your mental standpoint to like know like you know what I'm saying regardless of how any, how anything goes, I'm gonna be out there with y'all. But, I know that I'm going to take care of myself when I go home. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm always staying on top of my body. I it's been days this year where like I wake up at 5:15 to go get dry needling at six in the morning before I come to the facility and then come to the facility. I, like long days, really. So like I, you know what I'm saying? It's it's definitely more confident just, you know what I'm saying, obviously being in the mix of this situation in the season so consistent to the point where it's like you get to build those relationships with the guys and the guys can see how much you care about it, see how much you, you know what I'm saying, you want to be connected with these guys. And I think that was mainly one of my focuses this year, just learning from last year, like to, you know what I'm saying, show the guys, you know what I'm saying, how much you, 
it's easy to say how much you care about this game, but like when people see it day in and day out, see how you go about your process, see how you continue to make sure that you can be the best version of yourself every day, and whether it be in practice, whether it be through your process during the week, seeing how much you, you know what I'm saying, do the extra extra stuff just so that you can be the best version of yourself when it comes Sunday, like it rub off. So I try to just consistently be myself and you know what I'm saying learn from everybody, try to learn from everybody, but also knowing when to be a follower, when to be a leader. Cool. It seems like this team on a different topic, it seems like this team has a really good dynamic between the offense and the defense, even in situations like lately where the defense has been playing a lot better than the offense by most statistical standpoints. Do you agree with that? And what what's important about that in terms of being a team to not make it, you know, make it too much about the offense struggling and and more about we're all together in this as a team? Um, Because like, I, I think from the top down, we know like we've seen, obviously a lot of the guys that we have on this team was on that Super Bowl team. So we've seen what complimentary football looks like. So, and you know, championship type teams, championship type coaches, even me being like, I came from Alabama, like I've seen championship type culture. So like, it's, it's never no room to like finger point. That's never, I'm saying that's never going to solve anything. You saying, oh, the offense could have did this. I mean, like, you you can you can obviously say that, and you know what I'm saying it it will help us. But like, as a man, nobody plays a perfect game. Nobody, you know what I'm saying, plays perfect throughout the whole game. That I, if you watch the film week in and week out, like we all do, we we see people, you know what I'm saying, make mistakes. The best players make mistakes. So like, you know, it's no such thing as a perfect game. But at the same time, you got to try to, you know what I'm saying, when the opportunity presents itself, what can you do better? What can, you know what I'm saying, how can you make an impact, you know what I'm saying, that can, you know what I'm saying, be that spark to make everybody else, like, you know what I'm saying, rally off of it, feed off of that type of energy. So that's why I feel like even like, not to even try to, I always try to be present, but just, you know what I'm saying, you always learn from the past. I feel like certain things like you know what I'm saying where we had instances where we may drop picks things like that where it's like we want to get rid of those if ands or buts and like you know what I'm saying we know we got the talent on our team to where we we can make those plays and help us spark those spark those like little momentum shifts and shit like that where excuse my language but like spark those little momentum shifts where it's like okay and like okay the offense gonna feed off of that or you know what I'm saying just defensively we gonna feed off of that and then it's a domino effect where one player make a play, next thing you know, the next player make a play, and then it continues on, and then everybody starts to, like, be more comfortable being the best version of themselves. Right on. Appreciate it. Gary? Hi, Terrell. Thank you uh, for your time for doing this. Um, what do you think you guys can do as uh, outside linebackers and edge rushers to generate more sacks? I mean, if you watch the film like we do, it's, it's, if you look at the film, like, you know what I'm saying, we talk about it, like teams are sliding this way, getting the ball out quick, 1.9 seconds, 2.5 seconds. Like, they, you know what I'm saying, teams know what our front, you know what I'm saying, what our front is capable of. So I feel like they, tr they know they got to get the ball out quick. And when it comes to sacks, like, sacks is a collective effort. So... You know what I'm saying we got to rush, but it's it's you know what I'm saying it, it comes as a defense. So if teams are trying to get the ball out quick, it's kind of how can I say it? Like they'll try to get the ball out quick and just try to nickel and dime us. So then when they do actually have those little plays where you know what I'm saying might take more time to develop, they'll might they might max protect and then you know what I'm saying try to you know what I'm saying slide two people to AD, have a chipper my way and have a chipper on Flo's way. So, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? It limits those opportunities where, okay, we'll rather max protect and just have three-man routes. And then, you know what I'm saying? Basically let our plays develop while we, you know what I'm saying? Hold these guys and try to get the ball out quick. So it's, it's not really more so of a, it's not really more so of a, like, what can we do to, create more sacks. It's more so, I feel like in the early downs, we got to do more to 
put them in a situation where they're going to have to hold the ball longer if they want to pick up a first down. So I feel like with me, I look at it like, you know what I'm saying, maybe a first and second down, we we limit them to where, you know what I'm saying, they, we get them into a situation where they got to be in a third and six, third and seven maybe instead of a third and three, third and four where your, your playbook has so much room of, you know what I'm saying, what plays you might get. Sure. Well, thanks very, thanks very much. Appreciate it. And we'll wrap with Sarah and Stu. Jalen was telling us last week about how much Raheem Morris means to him and, and how much he's learned from him as a coach. I'm curious, how would you describe him and what have you learned from him? I learned a lot from Ra. Ra's one of the, you know what I'm saying, obviously one of the best coaches I came across. And I feel like I've been across a lot of great coaches. And like Ra's one of them people, you can, you know what I'm saying, his office door is always open. If you want to ask him a question, you can always ask him a question. You want to learn something. You can always learn some football on or off the field. So just from seeing him and I'm saying, obviously I know Jalen talked a lot about like the backlash Rod gets, which is like, it's a lot of nonsense. I don't really try to like people on Twitter, everybody has an opinion. I mean, obviously we're in LA, it's the media capital. So like everybody's gonna have something to say about Ra or, you know what I'm saying? Try to point fingers at why the Rams look like this. Why do they? play like this, but like, as a man, just seeing how Rod just goes about his day every day, he's one of those guys that not only, you know what I'm saying, defensively, he makes everybody try to feel comfortable and be able to play free, play fast. And then also just being, you know what I'm saying, such a personable dude, he make you more comfortable to be the best version of yourself on and off the field so that it translates to the field. So when game day comes, like he wants you to, you know what I'm saying, shoot your shots and play however best it you feel like will translate to making plays and things of that nature. And then he also, like, he caused some great looks. Like, even, you know what I'm saying, going back to that Bucks game, like, Grok caught a hell of a game if you, you know what I'm saying, you look at just how we, we played for 59 minutes and I guess 15 seconds probably. Like, he caught a hell of a game. So, People, you know what I'm saying? I always like to look at it. That's why I don't really try to look outward. I try to look inward and, you know what I'm saying, the people that we have around this building because, like, people gonna always basically whisper your fail. I mean, whisper your accomplishments and scream out your failures, especially when you at this level, you, you know what I'm saying, coming off a of Super Bowl, everybody has their own expectations. But I think with us and Ra, Ra included, like, I think Ra has always had that approach, like, we can only control what we can control and, you know what I'm saying, continue to try to affect the game and affect, you know what I'm saying, the team from our defensive standpoint as best as we can. That's why we don't ever point the finger. I don't ever think any of us is ever looking like, okay, what about the offense? Like, it's never that because, you know what I'm saying, that's not a championship type culture. Thank you. Rapper Stu. Hey, Terrell, just going back to what you were talking about with Bobby, I know that the example he sets is obviously impactful from a leadership standpoint, but is there any like words of advice or encouragement maybe that he shared in the midst of the adversity you guys have kind of been facing here recently that have, you know, resonated and uh, stood out to you? Um, with Bobby, I mean, like I said, I kind of talked to him after the game, shower talk, like just, you know what I'm saying, what he thought about it, just like, you know what I'm saying? All we can do is be present and take things day by day, week by week. I think a lot of people are trying to put the external pressures on us. Are, are you thinking about playoffs? How are we going to make the playoffs? Like, we can't think about playoffs unless we think about today and we think about this week. If you, th if you think about this week, okay, what can we do to even just play like a playoff team from the top down and play complete? complimentary football as like we all talk about. So I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Bobby is always one of those guys where he, you know what I'm saying? He preaches being present, preaches, you know what I'm saying? Being, you know what I'm saying? Taking advantage of today, taking advantage of the opportunity that you get today and playing free, playing to the best of your ability in the moment so that, you know what I'm saying? When it gets down the line, then you can start, you know what I'm saying? We, you got to get there first. Like he's, he's one of those, you know what I'm saying? Just talking to him. Like I said, like 
what we talked about was mainly, you know what I'm saying, just continue to chop wood, carry water. Like that's all you can do is continue to enjoy the process and go about the process to the best of your abilities and try to affect others and help uplift everybody else so that we can all fall in line and then become that that team that we we know we're capable of.